Last Friday, a Virgin Galactic space rocket crashed over California's Mojave Desert on a test flight, killing one pilot and badly injuring the other. The crash was widely reported on BBC News over the weekend, including this report from David Willis on Saturday's early evening bulletin on BBC One. Could this be the end of a dream? Two minutes after being launched from a carrier plane, Spaceship Two split into pieces and fell to Earth. Large chunks of wreckage are strewn across a wide area of the desert. This is part of the wing of Spaceship Two. But the big question now is, will this remote, inhospitable area prove a resting place for a big dream? Well, among the viewers who contacted us with their thoughts about the coverage over the weekend was Lindsay Rowland, who joins us now from our Exeter studio. And with me here in the studio is Simon Waldman from the BBC News Channel. Lindsay, first, what, what prompted you to contact us about that coverage? I was actually quite sad, Samira, that it was more about Richard Branson and his dream being shattered and the fact that of the future of... Um, further flights and um, what a shame that his, pro his space program couldn't go further and less about the, the poor pilot and test pilot who died and were injured um, and I just thought it, if, if it wasn't for them they empowered Richard Branson and it should have been more about the human story more about them and less about Richard Branson. Did it also make a difference that it was Richard Branson and you know, essentially a commercial enterprise rather than um, something like NASA having a, a disaster? Uh, to me, and in my opinion, yes. Um, space tourism doesn't really benefit the wider population. It benefits Richard Branson cer certainly and it will benefit the celebrities that are, can afford to travel on his space programme. But if it had been NASA, I, don't, I, I honestly don't know, Samira. I, I was just incensed, as I said. Well, uh, Simon, what's your response to that? I mean, there was this language about the end of a dream, which you know, viewers did find quite odd and did seem to ignore the pilot. To an extent, I agree with Lindsay. When, when an, an incident, a tragedy like this happens, you try to answer a number of basic questions on, on behalf of the viewer. What happened? Who was affected? How and why? Did it happen? And whilst when the news first broke on Friday evening, we were we were concentrating on the what happened, we tried very, very hard to answer who did it affect. And I have to tell Lindsay that we were unable to do so for more than 24 hours after the accident, because despite asking Virgin and the authorities in the Mojave Desert, we didn't get a name until after seven o'clock on the Saturday night. As soon as we did, we were able to humanise the story, to explain that it was Mike Alsbury, he was 39, he was married, he had two kids. As soon as we had a photograph of him, we put it on the, on the air. And the clip we've just seen was from the Tea Time Bulletin when we didn't at that stage know the name. By the time we got to the main news that evening, there was a significant sequence in David Willis's report about Mike Alsbury, including we'd found some, some moving pictures of him in the desert, um, and he was a headline as well. So I think we, we tried to answer the question, but were unable to earlier on. What about Lindsay's concern about the whole focus on the commercial business aspect of it? I think that there is something of a, of a fascination with space travel. There is, a, there is a kind of romance about space travel. and. Whilst I completely agree with Lindsay, it ain't going to benefit her or me unless we win the lottery, there was a very significant question to be answered about the whole future of commercial space flights and the, the, the crash put into question the whole project. What do you make, Lindsay, of what Simon said, and particularly this issue of whether or not it was giving publicity more to Richard Branson's business enterprise? Yes, I felt that it was in the beginning. I understand now from what Simon's just said that they didn't have the full facts and obviously you can't report half a story if you don't have the facts in front of you. Um, but it, it just, as I said, it just seems because it's not going to benefit a wider population, it's going to benefit the, the uber rich. It's, to, in my opinion, big boys toys. I think that... Um, we should focus less on celebrity and celebrity lifestyles and more on real news and what's happening to real people. Simon, what's your response? Well, I hate to disagree with Lindsay because after all you do pay my wages, but this was a story that really gripped the audience 
um, um, statistics can lie, I know, but it was the most clicked on story on the BBC website all day Friday, and remember it only broke during the evening, all day Saturday. Um, I would disagree that we treated Richard Branson as a celebrity. He's undoubtedly a high profile entrepreneur, but um, we gave him a pretty testing and challenging interview on the Monday morning where we essentially asked him how he would respond to the accusation that it was nothing more than a, a gigantic ego trip and he wasn't best pleased. Simon Waldman and Lindsay Rowland, thank you both very much. Thank you.